Yeah, it is another episode of the Autumn Windbags. RJ Clifford wants Soto. Let's have some fun today. So, um, with all the news of the Raiders and the problems that they're having, there's been a lot of look back at that 2020 draft class. And on paper, it was supposed to be a pretty damn good one, right? Two first rounders, three third rounders, two fourth rounders. We're like, oh, this is going to be great. Oh, I see you're, you're choking in excitement because you were <laughs> so excited for our draft. No, it turned into trash. And it might be the worst draft in Raiders history. It's pretty damn close to the worst draft in NFL history. I would say it's probably the, for, the thing is, is there's no fifth, sixth, seventh round picks in this draft. Mm-hmm. All the all these picks are are first four rounds. Yeah, when when you when you talk about terrible drafts in you know Raiders or NFL history, you'll be like, oh, you know, they they whiffed on one, two, they didn't have a third, and then four, and they had like three sixes and a seventh, and then none of them panned out. Oh no, we had five picks in the up to the before the fourth round entered. Two firsts Fucking and three nuts. thirds. We had like, right. what was it like? We had like a f- seven of the first like 150 picks or something like that. Yep. <laughs> something stupid like that. Like it was, and that's how you build a brand new team, right? Like that's how you're supposed to be like, okay, here is our core for the next four years. Because the way that the, the drafts work now and the way the, the salary cap works is you need to cash in on really good players on their rookie contracts, specifically quarterbacks. Because when these quarterbacks start making 20, 25, soon to be $30 million a year, like when the salary cap goes up, it's going to be $30 million. Like any decent quarterbacks are making $30 million a year mm-hmm. in the next few seasons, right? Done deal, right? But if you get them on their established rookie contract, you can sp- yeah, get five the- years. You can get the production of that amazing player, but you can spread that wealth to support systems, yeah. right? Um, and this, so this was supposed to be that shot for the Raiders. Here is a core five, six, seven players. We're going to have them for four years. Sure, we'll miss on a couple, but some of them will be superstars, and we're just going to ball out. Instead, this is what we got. Now, normally, normally, you can't judge a draft class until they're like third or fourth season. Because so many players don't really pick up until two, three, four seasons in. Jonathan Abram, who was the draft class before this, Injured the whole first season. Atrocious his second season. Now he is here in his third, and you're like, oh, okay, he's an above-average starter. Doing better. He's doing, you know, he's he's competitive. He's a starter. He's a legit safety, right? This is a draft so bad, we're not even halfway through the second season. And we can already say it might be the worst draft of all time. Number one. pretty bad. Henry Ruggs, right? Now, this was a – now – This is the other part, though. Other drafts, you can be like, okay, on paper, these guys all look good. We just got super unlucky where they all just didn't pan out, right? It it happens sometimes. Sometimes players, you know, all the signs pointed pointed them being good, and it just didn't work out. Not the case here, Soto. Not even kind of the case here. First one, Henry Ruggs. Maybe the deepest wide receiver class in the history of the NFL. So many great receivers, right? There's basically the big three at the top. And they're like, all right, which one of those three is going to do it? Now, Henry Ruggs, I think, I don't think anybody rated him worse than the third best receiver of that class. He was There was basically three and everybody else, and he was kind of in that mix. But he wasn't even, like, top eight of wide, of rookie wide receivers. Of rookie wide receivers. Rookie ride, wide receivers his rookie year. And then, of course, we know car accident. DUI killed somebody. Now he's in prison. This isn't even, and this was someone that like maybe could have started to develop, but he didn't, he didn't, de- he didn't, he didn't really ball out his rookie year. And then now he may be in jail for the next 10 years in his second year. 10 plus. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing for, 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 for guys that, cause I understand that there are a lot of people who are optimists and we're like, well, the draft isn't an, an exact thing. Mm-hmm. When you miss on players, and when you miss on players on days one and two, so rounds one, two, and three, when you miss on guys, that means they're just either they're not like one of the best players at that position on your team, mm-hmm. or they're backups rotational guys. That's like you missed on him. He's still a player, but he's not 
rounds one, two, and three, those are starters. Those are starters and impact players on your team. Yeah. Like we, we've heard it, we've heard it, and we've talked about it a bunch of times. There's the top 15, 17, 18 players, and then there's a big group of like the next 50 who could just kind of move around depending on the need of the person and if do you like them better than the other guy or not. Sure. So that's like one rounds one, two, and into round three. So if you miss on those guys, missing on those guys is like, okay, he's not starting or he is starting, but, you know, he's he. we have guys that are better. Like, you know, we've dropped a guard. Well, he's the lesser of the two guards that we have. He's not as good as the other guard. Mm-hmm. That That's missing on a guy. We're talking about players who not only are not playing, they're not in the league in the second year. Every one of these players was drafted much higher than predicted. Yeah, every one of them, right? Yeah, every single one. And 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 when when you talked about uh, draft value before, uh, this this is the things that we need to we need to focus on is if you take a Damon Arnett in the first round, even if he becomes a rotational starter for you, you could have had Damon Arnett in the third round. Yeah, Damon Arnett was like not even the best two or three or four even so, corner on Ohio State. And, and you could have gotten – what else could you have gotten in that first round and waited on Damon Arnett? Got someone else, waited, traded down. You had options. Something. So, look, Henry Ruggs, he's going to be in prison for a while. Damon Arnett just got cut. Lim Bowden, traded, didn't play a snap for us. And this that was the one that, that bothered me the most. I was like, really? You're going to turn this running, like, athlete quarterback – from a crap school and turn him into a running back when you just drafted a first round running back in the one in the season before character issues. He didn't even make it to the regular season and he was traded away for pennies. It Uh, doesn't make sense. Brian Edwards. He's a starting wide receiver, but really hot and cold. I mean, he's been really quiet this season. Um, took a lot of time to develop last season. Injury issues also with him as well. He, and he's the best one of the group, Brian Edwards. And he's a guy that's like kind of just starting at wide receiver because he's the only X on the whole team. Tanner Muse, another that was probably the second most embarrassing pick. A random kind of like hybrid safety at Clemson who came in and they were lucky to put him on like kind of injured reserve for the first for the first season. Just because like that's how they bailed like they bailed themselves out because they knew he couldn't play, which is completely lost. Never played a snap and was cut this season. John Simpson, backup guard. He's been starting, but only because we got multiple guards hurt. And Amik Robertson's been bad. bad. Yeah, John John Simpson would would not play if if not for injuries. He would not see the field. Yeah. The Raiders would have been better if this were like a fantasy football team and they just auto drafted. Seriously. If they would have, if they would have just said, "Hey, uh, fucking Kuiper, who who we picking here?" Let's just like if they would just take it. All right, let's take the average uh, lineup, right, of the NFL, ESPN, the Athletic, CBS, all the different sports writers, and how they ranked every single like the whole draft, how they ranked every single player, and just took the average of each one and just took it as they came available. It would have been a thousand times better than what we got. Dude, I don't even want to start. Like, I wish I could find the 2020 NFL draft and just watch watch it and just see what who was available, who they were saying the Raiders should pick, who would you pick if you were, you know, who's to pick here, who do you think? I just want to go back and see and can kind of compare it to how those players are playing now because mm-hmm. goddamn. And this is what hurts is if you – It all if, hurts, dude. Well, this is what hurts the most. If you reach – and it works great you're a genius right if you reach you've doubled down on yourself and you look twice as bad when it happens and it's not like they reached once or twice it's not like they took like a couple flyers right? every like any, single pick any smart investor like they say you're supposed to have a pyramid of investment right like your base is just like kind of mutual funds bonds the bulk of your money is in just simple stuff that's going to get you you know, uh, three, small four, yield, but safe. Yeah, over three, time. four, five percent every year, and you move to kind of the middle part of the pyramid, and you get a you know, little higher risk stocks, stuff like that. And the very top 
It's just like lottery tickets, day right? trading, penny shit, stocks. Like, like hey, let's, let's try it. Flip on this shit. Yeah, yeah let's like let, if it hits, bam, we're making we're making millions. If it doesn't, well, we kind of knew it, right? That's supposed to kind of be how you invest. That's also should kind of be how you draft, right? Safe, safe, safe. Ooh, this guy could be phenomenal if we can make it work. Let's try a third rounder on this guy, and then you know, they basically did the entire top of the pyramid. It was inverted, right? It was an upside down pyramid, and it was just. All risk guys, all risk guys, Henry Ruggs, all speed, Damon Arnett, raw, out of position, but real aggressive. Lynn Bowden, crazy athlete. We just don't have a position for him. Brian Edwards, huge and strong, and he only dropped to us because he's injured. Tanner Muse, I don't know what the fuck they saw in Tanner Muse. I don't know what the fuck they saw that dude. I don't know what they saw in Tanner Muse. I was, I don't know if you remember, but I was like, dude, what the fuck are they doing drafting Damon Arnett? In the first round, mm-hmm. you see the guys that played there afterwards, and the guys that were playing with him. He wasn't, he wasn't like anything near what the rest of the secondary was at Ohio State. You know how hard it is to have your draft look like the worst draft of all time, and you're not even halfway through the second season of that draft class. You know how That's hard crazy, that is. Man. Fucking crazy. Four of the five, uh, four of the top five draft picks aren't even on the team anymore. Rugs, Arnett, Bowden, Muse, not even on the team. They couldn't last a year and a half, a season and a half. What's the best case scenario for this draft? Best case scenario, st- starting now, what we know moving forward. What's the best case scenario? Can Brian Edwards be a pro bowler? Okay, the best case scenario for best, I mean best re- case scenario realistically, okay, realistically, because yeah. the best case scenario is Brian Edwards becomes fucking Jerry Rice. It's never gonna happen, but that's but realistically, Henry Ruggs was framed, comes back, becomes Tim no, no, Brown. No, 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 no. <laughs> the best case scenario is Brian Edwards becomes a solid two wide receiver. He's mm-hmm. I don't think he's ever gonna be a one. He becomes a solid two. Um, maybe he he gets more of a. a he'd have to be a specifically Carr. a specific type of wide receiver because yes. he has a ceiling. His quickness has a ceiling. He'd have to be like a like a Terrell Owens, but not get his as hands fast. better, not as fast. Just kind of like muscle dudes, right? He like, needs to be like okay. I I see him as an Allen Robinson type. Mm-hmm. But just not as good in this route running than Allen Robinson. Allen mm-hmm. Robinson is is a big, tall receiver like Brian Edwards, uh, but he's a lot crisper with his routes. So if Brian Edwards can clean that up, I think he can be that type of guy. But I don't mm-hmm. think he'll ever be a number one receiver. And then I guess John Simpson. It's it's it wouldn't be unfathomable for him to develop into a solid starter. Right, he would be like I think his ceiling is a, a he's I he's a career backup dude, he's a career backup. Yeah. I hate to say from what I've seen of him, okay. he's a career backup. He's uh, we're we're aching for a thirty eight year old fucking Richie Incognito to come back. Yeah, that 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 should tell you everything. You're a second year guy, yeah. and we want this freaking ancient thirty eight year old broken down guy back more than you. Yeah. Uh, Amig Robertson, he can be realistically, he can be that rotational guy that can maybe play in the nickel or dime, and not and not hurt you. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, 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 no top flight so- starters. Uh, and I'm not saying that these guys all have you have to find superstars in every draft, but at least you find solid starters in every single draft. And that's the thing is, is that's that's the ceiling for pretty much one of these guys. The three that are left on your team, I don't see these other t- two of the three even being starters on the team, and that's being realistic. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's really disheartening when when you're you're trying to be optimistic about your future, but this keeps happening. You keep throwing away the bulk of your team and where your starters you waste are. Waste a whole draft class. Pretty much a whole class. A whole draft class. Like imagine the high school you went to just just happened to have no sophomores. <laughs> like, 
Like the plague just came into Marina High School in Huntington Beach, California, where I went to high school when I was a senior, and just all the sophomores disappeared. That's what it's like. Just a whole class wiped from the face of the earth, basically. Dude, from do you your want team. me? Do you, do you want? Do and you a want good one. Go, do you want me to go through the the wide receiver taken? Just one rounds one through two, one and two. Okay. Everyone after Henry Ruggs. So after Ruggs. This is who we could have had instead of Henry Ruggs. Anyone we wanted. I mean, we could have technically, which I wanted to do, is taken a tackle with the first pick mm-hmm. and then taking a wide receiver later in the, with our second pick because there were so many good ones. Yeah. So if we would have taken a tackle in the first round, we could have had Tristan Wirfs, Javon Kinlaw, mm-hmm. both Austin Jackson starting. Okay, I'm not going to go any further because I'm going to start yeah. crying. Just okay, more pissed off. W- wide receivers. Jerry Judy. Yep. CD, CD Lamb. Yep. Jalen Rager. Well, he's not very good. No. Justin Jefferson. Fuck. Awesome. Brandon Ayuk. Good. Pretty damn better good. Than, better than Ruggs. Better than Ruggs. T. Higgins. Fuck. Michael Pittman Jr. Double fuck. Yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's a Trojan. We don't want him. He's fucking balling out. He's their number one receiver. Uh, LaVisca Chenault. How many were, how many were drafted until Brian Edwards? How many wide well, receivers were drafted until we got uh, to Brian Edwards? K- KJ there? Hamler, Chase Claypool, <laughs> fuck. Van Jefferson, double fuck. Denzel Mims, he's been hurt, but he's starting to perform now. Uh, now just to double check, it. none of those, just, just, just to, just to, just to be, just to be sure. None of those guys got hammered behind the wheel of a car and killed anybody, right? Not that I'm aware of, no. Okay, yeah. So I guess they're all better than Henry Ruggs. Who gets the bulk of the blame for this draft class? We're, we're never going to know, dude. We're never going to know. That's that's the problem. The thing is, we're not. We, there's, it's impossible for us to figure that out now. What we can do is if... Mayock is still the GM come the next draft, and we see how wide the disparity between the consensus pick and mm-hmm. our pick. If yeah. if if there's a huge gap between the consensus pick and our pick going forward in the 2022 draft, then you could say, all right, maybe it wasn't so much Gruden, but more Mayock. I between doubt it. The Raiders between this draft, that 2020 draft, and now, there's like seven amazing 30 for 30s just waiting to be done. Just waiting. A 30 for 30 literally just on draft day, just draft weekend on this draft. Everything that happened with Ruggs, everything that happened with Gruden, um, the the front office stuff when everyone got fired. And if this team, like, goes to the Super Bowl, like, you know, let's say goes – Still, we're still on pace to go to the playoffs, right? Still five and three. The Raiders like go to go deep into the playoffs or do well. Like that's a whole thirty for thirty. This is crazy. This season has been absolutely bonkers, dude. I um, I really do hope this is a blip. On uh, like the 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 last game with the Giants was a blip on the radar, man. What what will really what will do. We the way this the story of this draft comes out is if I hate to, I don't want this to happen, but it would have to be like Mayock gets fired and like goes to writes work a for, book. Yeah, writes or like goes to work for ESPN or like the production company that does 30 for 30s. The whole Gruden thing kind of like wraps up, right? Like whatever like potential lawsuit is done, right? Like all that's done. Mm-hmm. And then you get him. Gruden and Mayock saying, like, who actually made the choice, who actually decided this. They, like, interview Henry Ruggs in prison, <laughs> you know? Like, they they find whatever, like, gas station Tanner Muse is working at. Talk to him. That's they the one they, out. they find Damon Arnett living with his girlfriend who's supporting him while he makes his mixtape. That's how we're going to find out what happened to the worst draft in Raiders history. 